the original camera in the lineup featured an 18 megapixel APS-C crop sensor and no electronic viewfinder. This camera remains popular today because it's the only camera in the entire lineup which supports the custom Magic Lantern firmware and people are using the Canon M to shoot raw video which you can't do with any of the other cameras. Then in 2013 Canon released the M2, a very similar camera but this time only for the Japanese market. Again 18 megapixels, no electronic viewfinder but just a bit snappier and better all around in terms of performance and responsiveness. Canon took a break in 2014 and in 2015 released the M3 and the system really started coming into its own, this time with a 24 megapixel sensor and an optional electronic viewfinder. Canon released the M10 with the older sensor and no electronic viewfinder. And note this combination of camera on top and camera on bottom. The original M split into two product lines, one with more advanced features and controls like the M3 and one with significantly cut down features like the M10 which behaves a lot more like a traditional point and shoot except this time you can change the lenses. As always the naming conventions of these camera companies continue to elude me. In 2016 Canon went into a slightly different direction and gave us the M5. Canon gave us a lot of control options, buttons and dials and this time included a built-in electronic viewfinder. In 2017 once again, you have that two hit combo. We had the M6 at the top with 24 megapixels and an optional EVF and significantly more controls and customization than the M100 down below, which was again, like a very, very capable point and shoot. Canon kept putting in faster and faster processors with these cameras. The autofocus improvements are noticeable. In 2018, we got the original M50 which would become a very popular camera for its vlogging and video potential, kind of became a standard recommendation if you want to start a YouTube channel. Like the M5, it had, a, it had that 24 megapixel sensor and a 2.36 megapixel built-in EVF, except with better autofocus performance. In 2019, Canon released uh, what could be called the culmination of the lineup. The M6 Mark II this time with a whopping 33 megapixel sensor and an optional EVF. Significantly better autofocus improvements across the board and this is by far the most capable M camera. So if you're looking for the best in the lineup this is it. And of course we got the M200 which is a very capable camera but not for those who want more dials, controls and customization. And the last camera ever released was the M50 Mark II back in 2020. A lot of people joke on the internet that this was just a firmware update masquerading as a new camera and that it's virtually indistinguishable from the M50 although there are some improvements particularly in eye detect autofocus. So which of these cameras is right for you? And should you even buy one of them? Considering the fact that Canon is unlikely to release a new one. Now that they're going full steam ahead with their RF mount and there really should have been an M5 Mark II it would have been nice to get a fully featured, very capable camera with a built-in EVF and all the latest autofocus improvements, but we just never got one. If you're undecided, for example, between the M6 Mark II and the M200, you can see instantly what I mean by cut down feature set. Looking at the top and the back of these two cameras, we can see there's a whole lot more going on on the back of the M6 Mark II. The M200 is, for all intents and purposes, an advanced point and shoot camera with interchangeable lenses. It's still very capable, but as you can see, there just aren't as many buttons and controls. What about the M6 Mark II versus the M50 or the M50 Mark II? That's a bit of a tougher decision. Of course, for those who want the utmost in capability and features and controls, the M6 Mark II is unbeatable. But the M50 with its built-in electronic viewfinder could be all the camera you need if you're just looking for an ultra portable travel photo video hybrid deal. What about the older M5 versus the M50? We can see the M5 gives you that additional dial. The M50 however does have better autofocus performance so that should factor into your decision.
We have the model name. For example, we have the original EOS M. It was released in 2012. It has an 18 megapixel sensor. It weighs 298 grams with a 230 rated SEPA battery life, 4.3 frames per second maximum continuous shooting, no electronic viewfinder, 31 autofocus points, no dual pixel autofocus, that's Canon's improved autofocus technology. It uses the smaller, lower capacity LPE12 battery. It has a fixed LCD screen. It can do up to 1080p, 30 FPS video, although for this specific camera, that's hackable with Magic Lantern software. We're going to save that for a future video. It has a microphone jack and a Digic 5 processor. It's no longer available new, but you can find it in minty used condition for around $200 or less. Going down the list, we have the M2, which was the Japanese domestic market kind of improvement over the M. The M3, which for the first time featured that 24 megapixel sensor and gave you the ability to include an optional EVF, and this time with a beefier LPE17 battery and a tilting LCD screen. We have the M6, the M6 Mark II. Which, then we have the simpler, more cut down, pocketable, automatic kind of cameras like the M10, M100, and the M200. We have the M5, which is lonely, never got an update. And finally, we have the M50, very popular camera, also known as the Kiss M in Japan and the M50 Mark II, which was the last camera to be released. So where's the value? I'd be looking at two models. I'd be looking at the original M50, around $300 or under on the used market. It's a very capable camera. If you're looking for that affordable hybrid photo video solution, maybe you wanna get into YouTube or vlogging, just don't be fooled by its supposed 4K video abilities because you lose the dual pixel autofocus in 4K, and the 4K is also cropped in. If you're looking for great 1080p and you don't need that 4K, this is a great camera. If you, however, need the best of the best, you're looking at the M6 Mark II, this time with no compromises in the 4K video shooting, an LPE17 battery, which is a lot beefier, the highest FPS, 14 FPS, which actually makes it kind of a capable sports action and wildlife camera in its own right. And it's available used for 650 bucks. As Canon aggressively transitions its users to, the, to its new RF mirrorless mount, I expect prices for all of these cameras to drop. So watch this space closely and look out for deals and you might just find that one of these cameras is the right one for you. Now, what about lenses? One of the chief complaints of the Canon M system is that there supposedly weren't enough lenses. Here's the thing about lenses. Lenses are not Pokemon. You do not need to catch them all. Chances are you only need two or three lenses for most of your photographic needs. On top of that, you have the ability with a cheap adapter to adapt Canon's EF or EFS lenses. So if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of size and weight, you have a lot of options. Now let's look at the lenses that are available natively for the system with full autofocus. We have the Sigma 16mm f1.4. We have the Canon 22mm f2 STM, the cute little pancake lens that everyone loves. We have the Viltrox 23mm, which gives you a very useful 37mm equivalent. We have Canon's 28mm f3.5 macro, which may actually be more useful as a standard normal lens with its 45 millimeter equivalent field of view. We have Sigma's excellent 30 millimeter f1.4. We have Canon's 32 millimeter f1.4, widely regarded as the best lens optically made for this system. It really should have a red ring around it and a Canon L designation because this is truly a pro grade lens. We have Sigma's excellent 56 millimeter f1.4, which becomes a great portrait lens for the system. Again, Viltrox getting in there at half the price. Now getting into the zooms, we have Canon's 11 to 22 millimeter, an excellent wide angle lens. Canon's 15 to 45 millimeter STM, which is the standard kit lens that ships with most M cameras. We have Canon's 18 to 55 millimeter STM, which was the standard kit lens prior to the 15 to 45. And you can still find both of these two lenses for next to nothing on the used market. 
we have Canon's all-in-one 18 to 150 millimeter, which is an equivalent field of view of 29 to 240, making this a great all-in-one travel solution. We have the Tamron 18 to 200 millimeters. And finally, we have Canon's 55 to 200 millimeter, which is the standard telephoto zoom, just as well, because it's a great lens and it's available for not much money used. So for each lens, we have the full frame equivalent field of view, the minimum focusing distance in centimeters, the filter thread size, the length of the lens, if you're looking to be as compact as possible, this is important, how much it weighs in grams and ounces, whether it has built-in image stabilization, and the price is new as of today, and on eBay for a minty used copy. Of course, you may be able to save considerable money if you're buying these locally, or if you're buying these bundled with an existing M camera. I've highlighted the ones that are considered to be the best lenses for the mount. Mostly primes and one zoom, the Canon 11 to 22 millimeters is excellent. If you can put together a kit that works for you, then this could still be a great system and it's getting better and better on the used market as prices continue to drop. What about adapted Canon EF and EFS lenses? Obviously we can't go through them all in this video. I'll just mention three that I think make a lot of sense. The EFS 10 to 18 millimeters is a really capable wide angle lens and you can pick this guy up used for around 150, 175. It's stabilized, the distortion is well controlled. And again, if you're just going for landscapes, basic architecture, real estate, this is a great choice. The classic Nifty 50 1.8 STM, which you can pick up for $60, $70 in absolutely mint condition. Coupled with a cheap adapter, now you have the ability to take excellent portraits with your end camera. And finally, the EFS 55 to 250 millimeter IS STM. A lot of people even prefer this lens over the native option because you get that extra 50 millimeters at the long end and you save some money. And as long as you're willing to put up with just a little bit more size and bulk, this is a great telephoto option. There are also tons of native manual focus options for the system. I'll just mention three lenses that I think would be good options. The Rokinon 12 millimeter F2 becomes really fun, ultra wide angle. So if you wanna get into astrophotography, for example, the TT Artisan 35 millimeter 1.4 is a really cheap lens and it's a great optical formula. So I believe they have better quality control than seven artisans, for example. I'm not an expert on these lenses. You can look to Christopher Frost's channel if you want more detailed reviews of this type of lens. And finally, the Lawa 65 millimeter f2.8. If you really wanna get into macro and you're willing to shell out the money, this is a high quality optic. With the cameras and lenses available, there's so many possibilities millions of potential camera lens combinations. You could take the M50 or the M50 Mark II. It's going to come with the standard 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens, which is great for all around use, travel, blogging, vlogging, you name it. And you could couple it with a fast telephoto prime. For example, the Sigma 56 millimeter F1.4 is a great lens to use in case your vlogging career doesn't take off and you need to make some extra money by taking portraits. You could take a camera like the M100 or the M200, throw away that 15 to 45, and just add Canon's little 22 millimeter F2 STM pancake lens, and you've got a street photography monster right in your pocket. And finally, for peak performance, you could take the M6 Mark II, throw on one of those optional EVFs, and then we're going to add three lenses, the excellent 11 to 22 millimeter STM, the superb, sublime 32 millimeter f1.4 for your normal and portrait needs. And finally, we're gonna adapt the 55 to 250 millimeter IS STM for that additional bit of reach and to take advantage of the excellent autofocus and fast rate of fire offered by the M6 Mark II. I hope this video was useful. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching and subscribe for more.